What's going on guys? Before we kick off this video, I just want to say I am sorry I have not uploaded lately and by now you've probably seen a video of my car on the dyno either by Boosted Boys or Suicide CRX. Make sure to check out both their channels. They're both great videos covering the car. Um, the reason I didn't record anything on it is I brought my camera but I forgot my SD card so I couldn't record anything um, which sucks but it is what it is. They both did a great job getting video of the car so I'm at least glad they were there. Um, so yeah. This whole video is kind of like a hodgepodge of clips that I've recorded of the car over the last month or so while I haven't been making a video. And I figure I finally put everything together and at least get you guys some content. Since racing season's coming up, I'm going to be recording a bunch more of that stuff and anything I do further on the car. <laughs> habit of buying cheap crap at Harbor Freight. So what I bought is this Viking uh, battery car jumper thing. So we're going to head over to Kyle, uh, Boosted Boy's place, and give this a try, see if it works, because I guarantee you that kid's got a car with a dead battery. So we'll be able to try that out. I also bought this cheap little jack, uh, just a one and a half ton quick racket, rapid jack or whatever they call them. Um, I bought that for drag racing this season because I usually used to carry around like a three and a half ton jack, a big steel one, and that thing was a pain in my ass. So yeah, went and bought that yesterday and like I said, I bought the Viking car jump thing. So we're gonna give that a try. And I also need to go over to Kyle's to look at Jeremy's Civic that he's building, his turbo hatch. Um, I really am liking how the intercooler on it is turning out. So I'm going to run over there and see if that is something that I'm going to purchase. Not their intercooler, but I'm going to buy the same core and build my own. Just because mine sits really close to the exhaust manifold and makes running the oil return line really hard. And, you know, I haven't even started the car, but I feel like the oil return line is not going to be very happy on it because it kind of does run uphill. So yeah, I'm gonna run over there, check that out, make sure it's gonna give me more clearance for that oil return line, and also try out my new Harbor Freight finds. So yeah, I'll start recording again when we get there, which will be in like two seconds. What do? Well. Why? Because go fast. But why? Why what? But why go fast? To go faster than you. Nope, not gonna happen. <laughs> so Kyle, was I correct that you have a car with a dead yeah, battery? I have been dead for three days. <laughs> so Alright, so we're gonna go try this Harbor Freight special jump pack out and see if it actually works. I so. Yeah, I know I left the lights on for like <laughs> all did. night. Alright, I'll meet you out there. Let's take a look here and see what we got. Alright. See what's in this stupid thing. That J series. Boy. Here we go. We're gonna give this thing a test here. I'm gonna set the camera down while I pull it out, so. All right, so we got this thing set up. We're gonna try and crank this over. Kyle, take the camera in there. Show him that you're gonna try and crank it and it's dead. Oh yeah, she's dead. All right, I charged this thing last night. You can see it's 100%. So All right. Hopefully it works. Get it. All right, black to red, red to black. Hit it, boy. 
Oh. That is freaking awesome, bud. That works good. Wow. Good job. Nick. Can you shut my hood for me? Yeah, dude. Watch this, guys. He doesn't know I still have this sprayer hooked up. Wow. Damn, oh. <laughs> that was not very nice, sir. Did I get you? I think no. you dodged it. <laughs> that was close, though. Oh, I forgot about that. The good old days, spraying Wendy's windows. Just spraying <laughs> random people in the middle of the road. <laughs> oh, shit. Well, there you have it. This little cheap thing actually works. You gonna move the car? Yeah, I'm gonna pull it over here. Okay. Don't park behind me. You're not leaving. Oh. I'm trapping you. He puts CRB's the lotion fine. on the skin. <laughs> <gasps> Got some torque, boy. All right, I'm gonna go home and go weep about how my car's bent. All right. Weep. Hey, you know, when you gaps, All right, fool. You know, any, any time of the day. Whatever. She's always running, so. Well, let's just compare how much money was spent between the two. Well, <laughs> I did beat you in that Mark II, and I'm I'm down to compare money on those. Yeah. MR2 is pretty cheap, bro. Let's re race the MR2 in the Civic with a decent tranny. Alright. And then yeah. we'll compare money. I'll throw some radios on that MR2 shit. Alright. Right. <laughs> Alright, I'm out of here. Yeah. Later, guys. What are you doing? Come here. What? What? <laughs> You're a goofball, aren't you? You're a goofer. Get back. You don't need your outside. Where's your ball? Where's your ball? This dog is a freaking goof. Well, come here. Give it here. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> oh my goodness. Is that, is that what you want? The dog is a freak. And I figure I finally put everything together and at least get you guys some content. Since racing season's coming up, I'm going to be recording a bunch more of that stuff and anything I do further on the car. So that includes what we're doing today. Um, I'm recording it on my phone since I didn't bring my camera. I wasn't planning on doing this today, but since I have some free time, we're gonna give it a shot. And <clears throat> if you guys remember when I first bought the car, I had mentioned that it had been wrecked or it looked at least like it had been wrecked. And after looking at a bunch of other cars, EK coupes especially, um, I've come to the realization that it at least has been in a wreck um, I don't know how bad it was, but it was bad enough to move both the front frame rails over and Today we're gonna be straightening those out. So it's a little bit of a redneck way to do it But it does work very well. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we're doing So you can see the car is out here and if you take a look um, Don't mind the two rags covering the uh, catch can ports I just did that so I could move the car around but if you look at the frame rail um, I don't know if you'll be able to see it because this thing doesn't auto focus or light correction very good But you can see this frame rail is like pretty pushed out and it's like over this way a bunch and This one is kind of over this way a little bit too um, It kind it looks a bit straighter from here I've already kind of tugged on it a time or two to pull it back so it does look a lot better But it still needs to go more this way and so does this one this one needs to probably go about another half inch inwards if not more so uh yeah it's definitely been in a wreck it's not a big deal the car seems to drive fairly straight but it makes it a real pain in the butt to line up the headlights and the bumper when this thing's all offset 
Um, if you guys have ever seen the car in one of the videos I'll put together, this headlight likes to stick out a ways and it's like outside of the bumper. And then this one's like pushed in and sits behind the bumper a little bit. So I hope by pulling this whole thing back over, we can straighten up this core support a little bit more. And, uh, yeah. So how we're doing it. So I'm using my good old Ford tractor over there to, uh, just hook a ratchet strap to it. And I've been hooking it down around this frame rail and then just winding up and tugging on that thing pretty hard. It was working fairly well, but it was pulling the car around a bunch. So I'm going to anchor the car down with my truck here with a chain, probably somewhere back here on the frame. Um, and that way it will kind of isolate this front core to be tugged back over that way. So I'm going to go ahead and hook the chain up, hook the tractor up, and then we will give this thing a couple tugs. Yeah, I hooked a chain down to the K-member. Uh, it's got a few bolts right there into the subframe through the K-member. So I figure that should be a pretty good place to hold that still. I've also gone ahead and loosened up this motor mount here. As you can see, it's been pulled back a little bit. I think that's just what they do, how they do. Um, but I did loosen it a little bit because this one has a ton of adjustment for like in and out and back and forth. So, uh, yeah, I figure I'll leave that one a little loose and hopefully it'll encourage this frame rail to come in a little bit. Um, this one doesn't really have any adjustment on it. It's kind of where it's at is what you get. So hopefully that one doesn't need to be loosened up or anything and I can just pull it out and it all lines up good. So yeah, let's go ahead and pull the tractor over here and start tugging on this thing. Oops. All right, ratchet strap is around the frame. Just gonna tug on it pretty hard with the tractor and see if we can't budge this front end over. So I've already been tugging on it a couple times and we are getting a little bit more out of her. This side's looking pretty good. So I'm gonna move over here and see if I can't get this one to straighten up some more. We're getting a lot closer though, a lot better than it was. You can see it's getting darker out and uh, I'm still working on this thing. It is getting a lot better. As you can see, this frame reel is almost straight. Uh, I don't know how well you can see it, but anyways, and this one's looking pretty good as well. So yeah, we are just tugging away at this thing. I got these uh, ratchet straps zip tied up here. So they're pulling right where I want them to on the outside of these frame rails to pull them over both equally. And uh, yeah, we're doing all right. Got it still hooked over here to the truck. I just had to turn it around a little bit uh, because it keeps pulling the ass end this way. And uh, yeah, is what it is. I'm gonna keep tugging on this thing just a little bit more and then probably call it a night. And uh, if it doesn't line up after that, I'm just gonna kick this thing into place until it does line up. So yeah, if you guys can hear that noise, that's the uh, like a alarm, a storm test thing. I don't know what the hell they're doing. But anyways, we're gonna get back to tugging on this thing and uh, see if we can't get this son of a gun straight.
looking a lot better. All right guys, so as you can see, the frame rails are looking a lot better, a lot straighter. Hard to see with this camera because the light correction sucks, but it's in line with the harmonic balancer like it should be. And on this side, it's in line with the transmission like it should be. Even though it looks kind of off, um, you know, it does look a lot, a lot better than it was. I can tell you firsthand, this frame rail was like sitting over the transmission. It was so far over this way, uh, just barely, but it was sitting over it and it shouldn't be like that. And this side, I mean, you could visually see where the frame rail like came out like a full inch this way. Um, it's probably still not perfect, you know. It's probably, I think the frame rail still like either a little one of these, like either twisted or something. But like I said, it's a lot better than it was. Um, when I first got the car, I noticed this issue. I wasn't really going to mess with it until last night. I got really pissed off and literally started curb stomping out the headlight because I couldn't get it to line up. So, uh, yeah, that's what kind of led to uh, hooking it to a chain and yanking on it with a tractor. So, it's been, uh, it's been a good day. I'm happy with how it turned out. I'm actually really surprised it did straighten out. Um, I was tugging on this thing for quite a while, just on this one frame rail, trying to get the whole thing to pull. But the ticket was using this and pulling on both frame rails at once and just giving it the beans. I mean, it really started to move it. And uh, it's looking a lot better. So... I'm pumped about that. I know the car drives fairly straight. I did take it out for a rip uh, after I got it tuned. Like I said, didn't have my camera for any of that. So unfortunately, we, that sucks. But uh, the car did drive really straight. So I think what happened is the previous owner or whoever, whenever, uh, got hit up in this corner. And I don't think it messed up any of the, like, the shock tower or strut tower or anything like that because that stuff's actually really solid um but up here is a little bit weaker because it's just you know a channel or like a just a frame rail so i do think they got hit in that corner and it kind of shoved this whole thing over this way um or something that's that's the only thing i can really think of you know with both frame rails being pushed this way and uh yeah all right guys unfortunately i could not find the headlight but it was funny as heck smashing the hell out of that thing last night when i couldn't get it to align um, I really, I knew about the bent frame since I bought the car. Actually, you know, right after I bought the car, I didn't have a lot of time. I did put it up on my lift and look at it real quick, but I didn't notice the frame rails were offset because I've never owned an EK. So I didn't even know to look for something like that. But ever since I have owned it, I did know they were bent and I was really hoping to get the whole front end put back on it today or yesterday. But, uh, that didn't happen because I couldn't get anything to line up and now I got to buy headlights for it. But uh, yeah, the car's a 96. I have the original 96 front end for it. Hood, grill, uh, bumper, fenders, everything. Um, but I did put that 2000 swap on it. So either way, I need to buy headlights. I'm not sure what front end I will go with. I'm kind of leaning towards the 96 front end. I do kind of like that style, but we'll just have to see when I get there. And uh, what headlights are cheaper really probably is what's gonna decide it. Sorry this video has been really scattered all over the place. I know in the beginning I was working on a dirt bike and then I was working on the car and now it's all over the place. You guys seen it on the dyno and I didn't film it. Um, but I'm going to try and get back into filming more for you guys. Uh, and like I said, the ending of this and the first little clip was filmed on my camera on my phone. And I know it's probably pretty shitty. So sorry about that. But yeah, I think that's going to be it for this video. And uh, I'll be working on the car Probably not much this week. I've got a lot of work to do for the business. So if I, uh, if I tell you guys I'm going to film more and then don't post for a week, don't get mad at me. I do have a full-time job running my own stuff. I'm not like Kyle, you know, where I can just uh, do whatever I want when I want because YouTube is full-time for him, which is awesome. Good for him, but uh, I don't have that luxury. So... It does take me longer to make videos for you guys, and I apologize for that. But yeah, that'll be the end of this one. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you have not. I will be posting more content on the car soon, and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. A little bit of a redneck frame straightening, but uh, did work. And in the next one, we will focus on getting the front of the car put together, fixing a bunch of little issues you guys did not get to see on Boosted Boys or Suicide CRX's channel um, about the dyno. There are a few little things we need to address, and we'll do that in the next video.
So, like I said, make sure you guys have subscribed, leave a like and a comment on this video, and we will see you in the next one. Peace.